We are going to be getting through the month of September in this video, and we will find out, are we going to be a playoff team 11 games back of the Houston Astros? And we are the number two wild card team. We're looking to go to the playoffs here for the second time in Mike Trout's career. And we kick off the month of September with a series against the Houston Astros. This game here, August 31st, and we are going to, I believe, lose this one 0-4, and we lost Logan Ohapi as well. So... That's kind of a pretty big injury for the two weeks out of the last month here. Luis Renifo with two hits. As we get shut out, Griffin Canyon allows three earn, and Robert Stevenson allows a run as well. But we are into September, so it's time for September call-ups. And I have two players in mind, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the last video. The first player getting the call-up is going to be Eric Mott. He has done pretty well at AAA level so far this season. And I'm excited to see what he can show us as he'll be making his MLB debut. And we are also going to be calling up Sean Skinner back to the big league level. I think what he brings to the team is good speed and good defense. And I think that's two things that you need late in the season. And I'm going to be calling up Jordan Adams to the big league level here. We're going to add him to the 40-man roster. We have a full 40-man roster, so somebody will be getting dropped from that. But I want to call him up. We have a roster space open with Logan Ohapi getting injured. Christian Bethencourt will be the lone catcher, though, so that's something to think about as our catching position is pretty thin. And I'm going to remove Oscar Gonzalez from the 40-man roster. He's brought a little bit of hope to the team. Not really, but Jordan Adams is going to get the call up for the first time. He'll be making not a big league debut, but for the first time since 2023, he'll be at the major league level. Well, September 1st, and we are going to not play that game yet. The Astros apparently have 27 guys on the roster here, so we'll send somebody down. Okay, so now we should run into no problems. The next game against the Astros, we're going to lose that one 3-4. to four. Two hits for J.D. Davis, Nolan Shanuel, and Zach Neto. And looking at the pitching here, Eric Mott did make his MLB debut, and he pitched a 2 and third, three strikeouts, allowing no runs. Fernando Guillen. Struggling a little bit in that start. He drops to 5-6 and six on the season. As John Means here against the Astros, if we're going to drop this one 2-3, to three, I believe that's six straight losses. We got swept by the Rangers, about to get swept by the Astros here. What does that mean for our playoff standings? We're the last remaining wildcard team. We need to pick up a win here against the Astros. I'm going to get a player lock game in with Alec Bohm here. 273 average, 23 home runs on the season. We need to win this game. Or else it'll be seven straight losses. Which is the thing that I feared the most coming into this final episode here in the final month of September. Is if we lose a bunch of games against you know, the Astros, who we play twice. We lose games against the Orioles. you know, We're going to fall out of that playoff race very quickly. We have to at least split these series against these tough teams. As here we are, top one against the Astros. And Alec Bohm's going to hit this one back up the middle. Jose Altuve... Doing it all himself. It's a double play to end the top half of the first. As we have Michael King on the mound for this game, he has a 4.17 ERA. As we have a 1-0 lead after a Mike Trout solo home run. Hopefully we can continue to score some runs in this game as Bohm watches the knuckle curve miss for ball one. Hunter Brown ahead in the count, 1-2 and two to Alec Bohm. The three-hitter is sitting back and he watches the fastball miss the zone. 2-2 up coming from Hunter Brown, and it's a perfect splitter for strike three. Alec Bohm goes down swinging, and the Astros have tied the game up with a Jose Altuve RBI. As we go top six, Hunter Brown still in the mound. Runner on first here for Alec Bohm. As that's an ugly swing by Bohm there to go down 0-2 in the count. Hunter Brown's not even trying to confuse him with the pitches. It's just fastballs up in the zone. As Reed Detmers down below, 7-2, and two third two-hit game against the Twins. Kind of interested to see how he's been performing this season. As this one's going to be hit, just foul as Bohm nearly got a bloop single. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Patrick Sandoval is doing as well on the Phillies. We acquired Alec Bohm from the Phillies for Sandoval. As Bohm is not going to go around, it'll be ball two. Here's the 2-2 two -two upcoming, and that's going to miss the zone. Patrick Wisdom and his 24 home runs is on deck. 242 average, 69 RBIs. Nice number. Here's the 3-2 count to Bohm. Runner goes, and Bohm will foul away the slider. 3-2 will miss, and Bohm will walk. And that will bring the big power threat, Patrick Wisdom, to the plate. As he's 0-2 with two strikeouts, 
That's a Patrick Wisdom style game, but throwing a home run, and that's the perfect Patrick Wisdom game. Here's the 2-2 count, and Wisdom will strike out for the third time to end the top half of the sixth. And the score is still 1-1 as J.P. France comes on the mound. Mike Trout on first, so we have some speed on the base paths. As this one's going to be hit deep to left field, this one might be off the wall. I think I got a little bit too excited as the play is made by Jordan Alvarez. And I don't think we're going to have another opportunity, but we do. Top 10, runners on the corners with two away. We have to score at least one in this situation. As J.P. France is still in the mound, 65 pitches in. Alec Bohm, of course, has that 99 clutch. So he's the guy you want at the plate in this situation. As this one is going to be hit to Jeremy Pena on the first. And that will finish off the top of the 10th. The Astros are going to not score. As we go top 11, we're on second for Patrick Wisdom, who is 0 for 4. As he's going to hit this one through the hole of short and third. We're not going to score. As my... We probably should have taken off there. I think we would have beat the catcher to the plate. Never mind. J.P. France was behind the plate. Didn't see that. Here's J.D. Davis. He's one for four. He's looking to put us ahead here in the top of the 11th. As he's going to poke this one out to shallow center. I don't think we're going to have a chance to tag on this play. I think we made the right call. Here's Jordan Adams now. As a zero average. 2-2 two -two count up coming to him. And he's going to go down swinging. J.P. France still in the game. He is, what, seven, 69 pitches into the game. As here's Nolan Shanyu out now 0 for 2 on the day. He'll look at ball four. Bases are loaded. For the backup catcher, Christian Bethencourt filling in for the injured Logan Ohapi. Here's the 1-2 count to him. And he's going to poke this one. And the play is not going to be made by the pitcher, J.P. France. And we will score a run. I'm honestly not sure what happened there. It was only hit 55 miles per hour. We do win the game. So I don't really know what did happen, but two to one, we win this one. Three hits for Mike Trout. Christian Bethencourt with a hit as well. Mike Trout hits his 34th home run on the season. Michael King gives us an excellent start. Chase Silseth and Andrew Wance. Chase Silseth, four innings of work. That's really good. I don't know why the CPU wants to keep, you know, a long relief pitcher in for six innings. That makes no sense. But it is what it is. We do win the game, so that is the best part. As the Nationals have claimed 28-year-old Oscar Gonzalez off of waivers, so we're going to lose him. So now we have to call the same dude up that we just sent down. I think it was Sanchez here. So we'll call him up to the double-A level. As now we're going to get into a series here against the 60-80 and 80 Milwaukee Brewers. Top 10, two outs, Alec Boehm. With another opportunity here, I'm going to take advantage of this one. We have only struck out 985 batters, which is 28th in the MLB. So that's a poor number there. Alec Boehm, he is one for four on the day. Two away here in the top of the 10th. As that one was crushed foul. You say Kikuchi on the mound here for the Brewers. As he delivers here, as that one is going to miss inside. 1-1 one, one is the count. As this one is going to be hit to right field. No siree, as we're going to go to the bottom of the 10th. The Brewers are going to have a chance to win this game. We're going to simulate the rest of this one. And the Brewers do win. It's Bryce Turang with a walk-off home run. Sean Skinner, two for five day, gets his average back up to 200. Patrick Wisdom as well. As Sean Skinner hit home run number two of his career. It was a loss, so it really doesn't matter. Jordan Montgomery gives up three, and Andrew Wentz is going to... Give up too much. Three earned. Looks like he blew the save in the bottom of the ninth, so not really sure why it's not showing us that he blew a save. But eight blown saves on a season for Andrew Wance has just gotten to the point where it's too much for me. I'm going to swap him. Tanner Scott is going to be called on to save some games here. He has four blown saves, and he's not even a closer. But he's had such an exceptional year here. When you look at his war, it's only a one war, but his ERA and whip is ridiculous. 0.84 apiece. I'm going to give him an opportunity to close some games out here down the stretch. Eric Mott, I'm going to go ahead and swap him with Robert Stevenson so he can get a little bit more opportunities here moving forward. Next game here against the Milwaukee Brewers, and we're going to win this one 7-4. That was a much-needed win. Two hits for Skinner, two for Alec Bohm, and two for Renjifo. As Bohm, Wisdom, and J.D. Davis all homer. Griffin Canyon, a pretty good start. 
it was Jose Soriano allowing two earned in the bottom of the ninth. So we about screwed that game up and Tanner Scott picks up the save. So it is the series finale here. It's Fernando Guillen on the mound and we win this one nine to six. So it's a series win against the Brewers. Three hits for Mike Trout, three for Renjifo and three for Andy Abanez. That is going to be home runs for Trout, Bohm and Renjifo. Fernando Guillen, only three innings of work and he allowed six runs in the first two innings. Chase Silseth did a really good job. Eric Mott, Andrew Wance, and Tanner Scott. So the bullpen, definitely the MVPs of that game right there. Where does that put us in wild card talk? We are two games up on the Orioles. If the season were to end today, we would be taking on the Minnesota Twins. I'd prefer to take on the Twins instead of the Astros, but we'll have to see how the season plays out. And we are no longer second place in the American League West. That belongs to the Texas Rangers who have made a strong push here down the stretch as we have a series here against the Colorado Rockies you have to win this series right here bottom eight two outs Christian Bethlecourt to the plate we're gonna win it two to one three hits for Luis Renjifo a home run for him as well and John Means with an excellent start Chase Silseth picks up win number 17 as Mike Trout is now number one in MVP voting that would be awesome to get him an MVP here. Chase Silseth is number two and Cy Young, which is ridiculous. If we were able to do that, that would be one of the more incredible things that I've seen. Looking at Lawrence Byler here, he is the number 14 prospect in baseball, and he's had an excellent season here. 2.9 ERA, 1.21 whip, a 4.3 war. He's had some serious development. This guy has turned in from... A low overall prospect to a real challenger here in a couple of years to be one of the best pitchers in our rotation. I mean, give it four years, he might end up becoming one of the best pitchers in the rotation. Dennis Brown is our second best prospect, and he's seen some serious development. I've even considered maybe bringing him up for the playoffs with a 285 average, 19 home runs, and 837 OPS, 2.6 war. Love his development all around. I don't think he would make his MLB debut in the playoffs, but at 18 years old, it's really, uh, I would really love to be able to do it. Ken Nomo seen that power versus lefties drop, but he does have a 782 OPS with 16 home runs, a 2.4 war player. I think he's seen some pretty good development, just unfortunate to see that power decline, but he's still got a ways to go. I'm kind of excited for his future as well. Ramon Ramirez is number 78 here on the top 100. He's seen some solid development all around. I don't know that he's ready to become our next catcher of the future yet 11 homers 768 ops three point war 3.4 war player he's pretty good defensive catcher needs to work on his hitting skills a little bit but he probably is the catcher of the future at the moment and that is going to wrap up the players that we have on the top 100 only four prospects on the top 100 eric mott is also there but he's going to fall off very soon but I just wanted to keep you updated on our prospects as we play the next game against the Rockies and we win the two-game series. Logan Ohapi is ready to come back because it's a two-hit day for Shanuel, Hayes, Neto, and Christian Bethencourt. Home runs for Shanuel and Alec Bohm as Michael King has an excellent start. Robert Stevenson struggled again out of the bullpen, but Jimmy Herget and Caleb Ferguson do their thing for a total of three innings. Well, Jordan Adams had one at-bat and he's going to be going back down to the AAA level Definitely like to have him up on the team, but it's time for him to go back and do what he does best and play at the triple A level. I'll tell you what though, our one through four hitters are probably some of the best in baseball. Luis Renjifo with a 282 average, 22 home runs. Mike Trout, 305 average, 35 home runs. Alec Bohm, 271 average with 26 home runs. And then Patrick Wisdom, 241 average with 25 home runs. I'm gonna imagine all of these guys have over an 800 OPS, Renjifo at 804. Trout, I mean, you don't even have to look at this one. 981 OPS, Alec Bowman, 804 OPS, and then Patrick Wisdom, an 827 OPS. Our one through four are incredible. Looking at Logan Ohapi, he's had a decent year. The OPS sitting at 725. JD Davis has been really good since acquiring him in the trade. Austin Hayes has struggled. He's not been worth the contract at all. Shanuel, though, hitting for some power as he's three away from his career high. And a 789 OPS is pretty darn good. Zach Neto, on the other hand, 674 OPS, having a rough year, to say the least. I mean, he's probably the most likely candidate to get replaced in the offseason, potentially. He has B potential now, so that's not good. And he has 
three more years after this one of team control. Andy Abanez, 289 average. Mickey Moniak's had a pretty decent year. Sean Skinner and Kemp Alderman round out our bench here. Christian Bethencourt as well has been a really solid backup catcher for us. And then looking at the pitching rotation, our starters have all been pretty solid. Griffin Canyon, the only one above a four ERA. Chase Silseth has been incredible with 17 wins. Jimmy Hurriet, really good. Robert Stevenson struggled. Eric Mott's been solid. Ben Joyce, solid in the limited innings that he's pitched. Jose Soriano has not been that good for us. Caleb Ferguson has been really good. Um, just kind of got unlucky at the beginning of the season. Andrew Wentz and then Tanner Scott has been incredible. As we're going to be taking on the athletics now, time to kind of speed this up a little bit as we win game one against the A's 8-5. to five. Three hits for Patrick Wisdom, and then there's four more guys that have two hits. As Jordan Montgomery gave us a decent start, allowing three to earn, Andrew Wentz allowed two. Thankfully, our offense came to play as we've won five straight games now. Make it six straight as we're 79 and 69. We win this one eight to two. Four hits for Austin Hayes, three for Luis Renjifo, and two for Andy Abanez. It's home run number 23 for Renjifo. As Griffin Canning allowed two earn, but Chase Silseth came in, got the win. He's 18 and six now. This guy might screw around and win in, you know, a Cy Young out of the bullpen. As we win the next one against the A's, nine to four. Home run for Hayes, Bohm, and Renjifo. So Renjifo with 24 homers now. It's Fernando Guillen, four earn. He's kind of struggling here down the stretch. Robert Stevenson picks up the victory, and Jose Soriano did pretty decent as well. As we're looking to sweep the athletics, I'd love to get a player lock game in here with Luis Renjifo. 24 home runs on a season, 287 average. This guy has been incredible. It's John Means on the mound trying to complete the sweep. A 1.19 whip on the season. 91 strikeouts, 9-11 record as the Athletics are going to take a 2-0 lead. Michael Kopak's getting a start today. It's Luis Renjifo leading off here in the bottom of the first as he sees ball one. A seven-game winning streak here in September. That's the perfect time to get hot. You don't want to wait until, you know, the last week to get hot. But Luis Renjifo, I want to talk about the development we've seen out of him. His contact is among some of the best in baseball. 29 years old, 86 contact versus lefties, but the contact versus righties has gone up. He's become a really good hitter against right-handed pitching. Last year was kind of a down year, but this right here is a career year for him. He's every bit of worth this contract that we gave him. We got him for the next two years after this one. I really like Luis Renjifo. His defense is really solid. He can play just about anywhere. Just wanted to shout him out real quick because he has been one of the most developed players here in this franchise. And I've been pleased with his development all around. Because here comes the 2-2 from Michael Kopech. As Renifo is going to hit this one to the first baseman where he is going to try and beat him to the bag. He cannot. It's out number one against the Angels. 4-1 to one now. As Logan Ohapi hit a solo shot. But 4-1. to one. John Means doesn't look like he's having himself a good outing as Nick Allen comes to the plate. As this one will be hit directly to Renjifo as he throws on to Shanuel to make the play. Here's the 0-2 up coming from Kopech as the low four seam will be fouled off by Renjifo. So assuming that we do make the playoffs here, I'm really hoping we do. My plan is to do post-commentary playoff games as opposed to live commentary. It will allow me to edit it down so that I can do maybe two, three games in an episode. So the wild card series will be just one episode. And I think that'll make it so that we're not wasting too much time as the college football game comes out. I still want to continue this series, but you're going to see it a little bit less with the new college football video game coming out. We'll have to see how it plays out, but I'm hoping we can make the playoffs here in year three. Maybe make a World Series run. You never know. We've been a pretty solid team, and this team has been unlike the first two teams. I feel like they've bonded. You know, I know it's a video game, but I feel like they mesh really well and they play well together. Today we're not. Logan Ohapi's the only guy that's come to play. 9-2 to two the score here in the bottom of the fifth. I'm curious to see what kind of development Michael Kopech has gotten in this series. He's gotten some serious development. 81 overall. If you guys have watched Mr. Hurricane's Cardinal series, Kopech he got as a Rule 5 pickup, I do believe, and his overall was quite low. He's developed pretty good here in my franchise. As Renifo is going to get out in front of this four-seam fastball, and he'll pop it out to right field. 
You know, Michael Kopech's a trade candidate. Obviously not for a team like us because we're division rivals. Jeez, we're getting killed 12 to 3. We're still going to win the series, which is good, but this one right here probably uh, hurting morale a little bit as the play will be made. Renhufo 0 for 4, and that may be his last opportunity here. Trout hit a home run, so he's helping out his MVP um, hopes. If Trout can hit 40 home runs, I think he might have a strong case for the MVP this season. Last year, you know, his numbers might have been a little bit better, to be honest. But this year, he's hitting for more power, which definitely helps when he had the opportunity to play a little bit of DH as well. Here's the one-two count to Renhifo. He fouls away the four seam. We're nine and a half games back of the Astros. We're back into second place of the AL West. And we are the second wild card team. We're four and a half games up on the Orioles. So that series upcoming against them is a pretty important one. As we do lose this game, a couple guys with two hits, though. As Trout hits home run number 36. As Chase Silseth and John Mean struggled. I think Silseth can probably kiss his... Cy Young hopes goodbye after that outing. And Michael Kopech's a pretty interesting pitcher here in my franchise. 81 overall is pretty solid. But looking at his stats, I don't really know how he's developed that well. His stats have been really bad. He's been a positive war player, but it's kind of weird. 81 overall, he's got that pitching clutch at 99. He probably would fare better as a reliever. The K per nine at 79. I think he'd be a really good reliever. He has one more year after this year with the Athletics. As they have him on a cheap contract. As a reliever, this guy would be incredible. The pitching clutch at 99, the velocity a little bit there, the break. Yeah, I think that guy would fare better in the bullpen. As we're set to take on the Orioles, this is the most important series, I think, of this episode. As we're about five games back of us. So they could sweep us here and make that a little bit more narrow here. The Mariners are the next team. Get the Red Sox and Royals are the next two that are pretty much competing. But if we can win this series right here, I'll be feeling pretty good. The Mariners are going to be looking to beat us in this series as well. It's Michael King on the mound for this first game. We win this one 4-1. to one, And we are going to be a 500 team. Only three hits for the Orioles. As Renhifo, Trout, Wisdom, and Ohapi all with two hits apiece. And it's a home run for Mike Trout. Michael King, pretty good start. Chase Silseth, bounce back start. 19 wins. I'm curious to know what the MLB record is. Well, the MLB record is like in the 50s. So never mind that here. If we go to statistics and MLB records, I wonder if it's on here. Yeah, Charles Radborn, 59 wins in a season. I wonder what it is for a starter because Chase Silseth, not a starter, but kind of a starter. As Jordan Montgomery is going to pick up the win 5-4 to four here. So we do win this series. It's a home run for J.D. Davis. Two hits for Shanuel overall. As Jordan Montgomery had a really good game, Andrew Wance did not have a good game. He was unable to get a single out as Caleb Ferguson and Tanner Scott closed things down. As Mike Trout still remains the number one MVP guy with that 110 RBIs, looking at Cy Young, Chase Silseth is still there with the 19 wins. 168 strikeouts, I don't think he's really going to have a chance there, but it's still really cool to think about. As the finale here against the Baltimore Orioles, bases juice top of the eighth. It's Jose Soriano on the mound. Should we help him get out of the jam? With the comeback, we've had seven runs in the seventh because we were down eight to one. Let's see if Soriano can get out of this. Soriano brought on to face Connor Norby, the nine hitter here for the Orioles. Bases are loaded. Soriano is somebody that's known for being a little wild at times and walking batters. So maybe he wasn't the smartest guy to bring into the game, but that's what the CPU decided, so let's see what he's got. I think the rule of thumb here is just throw fastball, especially down 3-1 in the count now. I hate to do it, but I'm going to throw this fastball right on the middle, and it misses. So Jose Soriano comes on and throws five pitches. Four of them are balls. As the Mets have kind of gotten hot, but they're a team that sucks, so it really doesn't matter, huh? And then I wanted to tell you, I know we still have the playoffs upcoming. Hopefully, we can still make it. Um, but I wanted to tell you about what my plans are for the offseason. I would love to bring in a all-star you know, offensive player, more specifically a outfielder who plays that Austin Hayes rule because I want somebody who can play every day and is an all-star. I'd love a true ace pitcher. I'm talking somebody who's in the 90 overalls. 
And if we're unable to bring in any ace pitcher, that's a strike. If we're unable to bring in an ace on the mound, I'd love to bring in one of the best bullpen arms in baseball. So I'm talking like a elite relief arm, you know, something like that. An elite relief guy would be really good to have. We may even be able to get all three in the offseason. And that's my priority. Other than that, I think we have everything that we need. I'm going to return to simulating here. And we are going to have an opportunity in the bottom of the eighth with two outs. I'm going to continue, continue simulating here. As the Orioles do win the series finale, finale to keep their hopes alive. Three hits for Austin Hayes. Home run, home run number 38 for Mike Trout. As I can't speak right now for some reason. Chase Silseth, it's time to finally say goodbye to your Cy Young hopes. And then as far as starting pitchers go here, Griffin Canning is probably going to be the fifth arm going into the playoffs if we make it. We have how many games left? We have a three-game series. We have nine games left, and we are six games up on the Mariners. So as long as we don't get swept by them, we should be able to not sneak our way in, but make our way into the playoffs strongly. As game one against the Athletics, we lose three to four. Alec Bohm with three hits. He homers along with Austin Hayes. Fernando Guillen, six innings, two earned. Andrew Wance allows two. So he's struggling. He might be a guy that, you know, come playoff time, I don't think I'm going to really trust him that much. Here's John Means here against the Athletics. We win this one nine to four. Three hit day for Mickey Moniak. A home run for Wisdom and Bohm as Sean Skinner hits a triple and goes two for five. So his average is back up to 217. John Means allows four and five innings of work. But then Chase Silseth comes in and gives us six innings, only allowing three hits, walking two, and striking out four to pick up win number 20. And some of you may be wondering who leads the MLB in wins? Chase Silseth with 20 wins. 20 wins, six losses. This guy's been crazy. If he can pick up, let's say, what, 27 more strikeouts and pick up 200 strikeouts on the season, he legitimately could win the Cy Young. He's number one right now in the American League. Yeah, he could legitimately win the Cy Young, and he could legitimately open a game in the World Series. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But the finale, we do get beat against the Athletics. The Bees have finished their season, and they were not good enough to make the postseason. The Trash Pandas have won their division. As we lose this game 1-9 against the Athletics. Two hits for Shanuel. Looks like a bench game here. Sean Skinner commits an error. Michael King struggled. Robert Stevenson did as well, continuing to struggle. As he may not even make the playoff roster, to be honest with you. We're five games up on the Mariners here. We're the second wild card team at the moment. Would love to be the top wild card team, but I don't think that's going to happen. It could. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know why I was just so pessimistic right there. I... I can be a little bit more optimistic than I was right there. Well, if you're curious, Nelson Rada finished off the AAA season with a 255 average and 12 home runs. He saw some pretty solid development. He may make a push for that bench outfield spot next season. I think his speed and his defense gives him a real chance to become the bench outfielder. I, I really do. Matt Horvath didn't do so well, though. And he didn't see the development that I would have wanted to see. Minus nine to contact versus lefties is not good. So that's something to think about. Looking at the double, double way roster, Horacio Walker has been one of my favorite players all season. Plus 10 contact versus lefties at 18 years old. This guy could play on the big league roster. And he had a 324 hours with 14 home runs. That is amazing. Dennis Brown finishes 76 overall and sees development all across the board. Becoming a well-rounded hitter. Defense is getting better as well. He finished with 20 home runs and a 283 average with an 833 OPS. Taylor Trammell hit 22 home runs down at the double-A level. Ken Nomo, 270 average with 17 home runs as he finishes as a 64 overall, seeing a little bit of development. I think next year is a huge year for a guy like Ken Nomo. I like that his discipline got a plus six. That's a good thing to see. Ramon Ramirez finishes 272 average, 11 home runs. See some solid development across the board. Mainly you got contact versus righties. So that's good to see. Still needs to probably play a little bit at the double-A level before getting the call up to triple-A. But he still had a pretty solid season. Caden Dana had a decent season at the triple-A level. I think he may get some chances next season. I think last year is his last time to be sent down. 
maybe gets a chance next season as he still is yet to make his MLB debut. Chase Chaney was really good as a starting pitcher down at the AAA. He struggled at the big leagues in 10 innings of work, but I think he's a guy that we maybe need to try and trade in the offseason. Sam Bachman, he's another one of those guys that I think I may try to move on from. And then Ronnie Enriquez, his, it, the experiment didn't really work at the big league level in the 17 innings that he pitched, but he had 20 strikeouts. He was a positive war player. The FIP would indicate he maybe just got a little bit unlucky, but he saw some very solid development. He's somebody who next year will probably make the big league roster. I do like Ronnie Enriquez a lot. And then looking at the double A level, Herb Saunders, really good. Picked him up in the trade against the Guardians. Guillermo Avalos, really good. He's going to be playing at the triple A level season for sure. I think he'll be a starter in a rotation, not next year, but the year after that potentially. David Chu was pretty solid as well. 66 overall now as he had a 2.71 ERA, 1.13 whip. Really good year. And then Lawrence Byler, the guy who really has surprised me with his development. And I think it's time to stop sleeping on this guy. I think there's a reason he's one of the top prospects in baseball. He's pretty darn good. Positive 4.1 war player. Not walking a whole lot of batters. Striking out 141 and 180 innings of work. Only gave up 10 home runs all season. Lawrence Byler is nobody to really mess around about. He's going to be really good in the future. And that's pretty much all I want to highlight at the minor league level. I think all these guys played really good, but we have two more series left in the season. We're 83 and 73. This is an important series against the Mariners as we win game one. Austin Hayes, three hits. Patrick Wisdom with two. J.D. Davis with three. And Christian Bethicourt with two hits. Austin Hayes, Wisdom, and J.D. Davis all with home runs. Jordan Montgomery with an excellent start. Tanner Scott gave up two earned, though. 35 saves on the season for Andrew Wentz. I'm yapping right now. I don't even know what's going to come out of my mouth next. Game two. Here's Chase Silseth. Bottom of the ninth with two outs. I haven't pitched with him. Let's get a, let's get a, uh, let's get a chance to pitch with him here. The pitching for the Mariners has been top tier. One of the best in baseball. Their offense has just really not been that good. I'm curious. How good is Chase Silseth here? As he comes in in the bottom of the ninth. So he's the guy you want with the game on the line. Please do not walk in the game-winning run. As he just gave up a grand slam. The Mariners are going to win this one 5-1. It's a walk-off home run. Julio Rodriguez is happy about it. And I'm not. I don't think Chase Silseth is happy about it either. Although I think he's not going to get credited with the loss here in this situation. It will be Robert Stevenson. Stevenson is also going to be credited with three earned runs as opposed to still Seth with one. Two hits for Hayes and two for J.D. Davis, but unfortunately, the great start by Griffin Canning is not going to matter. Well, we have made the playoffs. We are a wild card team. It's up to the Rangers and the Mariners to figure out who's going to make the final spot, we're not going to win our division, so we will be playing a wild card matchup. At the moment, we would be pairing off against the Guardians if we finish as the second wild card team. If we're the first wild card team, we'll still be playing against the second team, which would be the Guardians. And the Rangers would be set at the moment to play the Astros. And I do not want to play the Astros. I'd rather play the Guardians. As here's the finale against the Mariners. We do lose it 0-5. to five. Mike Trout with two hits, and then Fernando Guillen struggling on the mound. Chase Silseth gives up two earned. Eric Mott has done really good since getting the call up, though, so that's something to think about as the Rangers have clinched. So we have the playoffs settled here in the American League. It's going to be the Rays out of the American League East with 101 wins. It's the Twins, 97 wins. Guardians with 86. The Astros, Angels, and Rangers. So we have made the playoffs. Man, it feels good to say that out loud. And then looking at the NL, it's the Braves and Phillies. So the Phillies have made the playoffs. The Reds and Cubs. And then the Dodgers. So there's one team left. It's the Diamondbacks or Marlins. Looks like it's probably going to be the Diamondbacks, though. I can't believe the Red Sox. I mean, holy crap, the Reds, my favorite team that I can't get right, made the playoffs. That's uh, congratulations to them. First game, we went 5-2 to two against the Astros. Three hits for Renjifo. As he was a single away from the cycle. Had a double, triple, and a home run. John Means 
with a pretty solid star. Eric Mott continuing to do his thing. And I'm going to show it one more time. I'm curious to see. Mike Trout has now dropped to third place in MVP voting. Chase Silseth has fallen to second place in Cy Young. So Trout's going to have to have a crazy last two games. And I'm going to get one of them in here. A player lock game here against Hunter Brown. If I can hit two home runs here with Mike Trout, he might have a chance at the MVP. A 982 OPS, which is third in the AL. 112 RBIs, 38 home runs, and a 308 average. Another casual elite year for Mike Trout. And the crazy thing is, is he's down to a 92 overall. 38 home runs is the best since 2022. I mean, this is one of the best years of his career. I'm curious to see what his war is at. It's at 7.6. So statistically, he had a better year last year, even though he only hit 36 home runs. He's played in more games this year as well. He walked more last year. And he played a little bit more defense than he did this season. Regardless, Mike Trout's looking for a big last couple of games here to make a MVP push. As that's going to be caught by Jeremy Pena. 99 off the bat and unfortunately right to the shortstop. As here's Jose Altuve. He has a 303 average this season. Still playing elite even with his age. As he's got himself a base hit in the top of the second off of Michael King. Who will be the game one starter for the wild card series is the question. I think it will probably will be Michael King. I think he's been our best pitcher. If not him, it would be Jordan Montgomery. I think that's probably what's likely. As Trout's going to pop this one up into fair, not fair, foul territory. And the play will be made. I apologize that this episode has not been what you guys had wanted from this episode. If that makes any sense. Like I know you guys probably wanted to see more gameplay as the season kind of got tense. But, you know, we kind of pulled free. And this month of September, we played really good baseball. We won series. We did what we had to do to make the playoffs. And so it really didn't get to the point where we needed to play full games. I will be playing full games in the playoffs, though. No player locks, nothing like that. Full games, no quick counts. Like I said, it's going to be post-commentary. But you're going to see the main highlights from the game. The episode will be exciting. And I hope you guys are excited for it. Because I'm excited to record them. And then afterwards, put together a video... That's worth watching. I know these live commentary videos are they are better for me to record because they're easier to edit and all of that. But I would prefer to do live commentary all the time. But I can't take the audio that I have during a live commentary and make it so that I can put even two games in an episode. If I put two games in an episode, full games, it would be like an hour and 30 minutes long. And I want to be able to get through these playoffs before the college football game comes out because I'm looking to do some cool stuff on that game. Is that's going to be an inning ending double play. But yeah, like I was saying, I'm looking to do some really cool stuff on the college football video game. Do a crazy good dynasty on there. Trying to manage two series at once is going to be pretty difficult, but I'm going to try my best. Like I said, you're not going to see this as much, but you will still see this on the channel. That's why I'm hoping we win the World Series. So if I needed to wrap the series up, at least it has a proper ending. As we're now down five to nothing. Hunter Brown still on the mound, and Mike Trout, without a home run here, can kiss his MVP chances goodbye. Last year, I think he finished fifth, and it looked, I mean, not fifth, third, and it looks like he's probably going to finish in third again this season. As he's down one and two in the count, as Hunter Brown's looking to pull off a complete game shutout here in game 161, as this one's going to be hit very well to deep left field. And it is gone. Home run number 39 for Mike Trout. His MVP hopes are still alive. I would love for Trout to be able to win the MVP. I really would. It would really make me happy. The result of this game doesn't really make me happy, though. Two hits for Shanuel, though. As it was Michael King, Ben Joyce, and Caleb Ferguson struggling in this game. As it's time for the final game of the season, I want to get a player lock. I mean, not a player lock game. Yes, a player lock game. But at the same time, you know, maybe show some highlights here and there of specific players as we go to the final game of the season. Here we are, top of the first, and it's Jordan Montgomery on the mound here against the Houston Astros. The main guy we're going to get a player lock game in with here is Jordan Montgomery. I know this isn't traditional player lock, but 
I wanted to get a game in with Montgomery and a pitcher because I really haven't done so. As the Astros quickly have a runner on first. As Montgomery throws a strike across. It's Ramon Urias to the plate here for the Astros. I'm glad we've been able to make the playoffs here. We're currently the third wild card team as that's going to be a two run bomb. As we're quickly down two to nothing. We better get familiar with this team really quick because it looks like this is probably the team we're going to be taking on in the wild card series. Unless we can pick up a win here and hope that the you know Rangers lost or the Guardians lost, but it looks like we will be the third wild card team. Also, I don't really think you want to roll Jordan Montgomery back out there for game one of the World Series after getting hit for three consecutive hits to lead the game off. I think the guy that I might want to see is Chase Silseth open the game. That is a real possibility, to be honest with you. It is. As there's a double off the Jordan Montgomery, his ERA is up to a 4.08 now. As Renifo grounds out, we're going to get an at-bat here with Mike Trout as we trail one, I mean four to nothing in the first inning. Luis Garcia on the mound here for the Astros as Trout with a huge hack. 96 and 65 are the Astros. So, like I said, this might be the team that we take on. As Trout with two ugly swings to start off the at-bat. Here's the one-two from Luis Garcia. Catcher can't even catch it because the cutter was cutting so hard. As the two-two count upcoming to Trout. As he swings and misses at the slider. You know what? I think that was a good swing. We were just too early on it. We'll go ahead and get an at-bat here with Alec Bohm as well. Can't catch up to the cutter. Also, I don't know who's going to be making this uh, playoff roster here. I think Kemp Alderman will be eligible to send down um, after this game because I don't think a Rule 5 pickup is required to be on the roster for the playoffs. But I think we're going to probably send him down. As Montgomery has a lot better of a second inning. As Wisdom singles, Ohapi... Fielder's choice, J.D. Davis will walk. It's Austin Hayes striking out, and Nolan Shanuel will single as well. What about Zach Neto, the guy who has not been that great this season? He's got the bases loaded for him here in the bottom of the second. Looking to tie the game up with one swing here. Even though that shouldn't be Neto's approach at the plate, his approach should be to just have a good at-bat. He's been really good defensively, though. Not 398 assists, which is seventh in the American League. Man, the cutter that Luis Garcia has is a difficult pitch to read. I hope we don't have to play this guy in the playoffs because I really can't hit him that well. As we're going to strike out with the bases juiced, 4 to nothing, the Astros lead. As Jordan Montgomery with a pretty solid bounce back second and third inning. It's Luis Renjifo leading off. Mike Trout with a single. Alec Bohm will pop up and Wisdom flies out to end the third. A two-run bomb for Jeremy Pena. I'm going to take Jordan Montgomery out. The reason that I want to take him out is because I think maybe the Astros are seeing a little bit too much of him. We'll bring in Robert Stevenson, who has not been good this season. And that's the reason I'm bringing him in. As it's simulating, what in the world's going on? What is going on? I wanted to make sure that I was able to get one more at-bat with... Mike Trout, and it started simulating crazy. What the heck? I think we'll be able to get one more at-bat. As Caleb Ferguson comes into the game here. Neto, Trout, and then we'll get an at-bat here with Mike Trout. Two for three with two singles. Can we hit one more home run? I would love it. Bottom nine. I'm not loving the score. There it is. Mike Trout, deep to left field. Does it have enough? To the wall, and it is caught, and I'm running on contact. What? That will end the game. The Astros win. Holy crap. It's time for me to get my mind right because I can't be playing this poorly in the playoffs. That was just... I, don't, I, I can't stop but laugh at the way that that game went. That was, that was horrible. I don't, know, I don't know what I was thinking. Running on contact there. That made no sense. Jeez, yeah. We're not going into the playoffs on a uh, good note. Montgomery struggled. Eric Mott allowed one. Because I, I wanted to get an inning with Eric Mott. 
and I just simulated like six innings and then proceed to run with only one out. I mean, that, that was uh, Javi, Javi Baez type stuff that just made no sense. Congratulations. The Angels have finished the postseason at 85 and 77. We have made the postseason as a wild card team and we'll be playing the Astros in the first round. The regular season has come to an end as the playoff roster has been made here. Got to make sure that it has everybody that I want. And it made the right moves for me. Kemp Alderman was sent down. And then looking at the relief pitchers here, Robert Stevenson was sent down. And he was the guy that I was going to send down. He just hasn't been good. 5.87 ERA, 1.5 whip was just not good enough for me. And I know there's guys like Ben Joyce and Jose Soriano that I don't know if I can rely on at all. But I do feel like I can rely on Andrew Wance, Caleb Ferguson, Jimmy Hergett, uh, Tanner Scott, and Eric Mott. I do feel like I can rely on these guys. Not to mention Chase Silseth is always there as well. Maybe you bring in John Means as a relief arm. I feel like I can rely on our bullpen. And then looking at our catchers here, Ohapi and Bethancourt are our backup guys. Andy Abanez is here. J.D. Davis will probably start in left field. And then Sean Skinner will be our backup outfielder. I think he finished the season strong enough to warrant that. And I'm happy with that right there. Looking at the statistics, I want to look at our team as a total here. Alec Bohm played 160 games. So that's good to see here. He led the team in at-bats by far. It was Mike Trout, though, who led us in hits with 182 of them. Luis Renjifo, 172. He finished with a 282 average with 25 home runs. Mike Trout, 39 bombs on a season, 308 average. Alec Bohm, this is exactly why we traded for him. 30 home runs, which he had 28 in the first two years combined of this series. Well, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to buy low. And he did his thing. 270 average, 341 on base, slugging 465 with an 806 OPS. He was a positive 3.6 war player. Patrick Wisdom was really good, even though he missed tons of games. Only played 172 games as opposed to 162 from a year ago. Luis Renjifo was solid. J.D. Davis as well. He's going to be starting in left field for us. Logan Ohapi did decent. Mickey Moniak wasn't that good. I'm going to be honest with you. He just really wasn't that good. Every year, he's kind of gotten a little worse here. Shanuel, 12 home runs. Zach Neto. Kind of wonder, should Zach Neto even start against righties? Austin Hayes was kind of solid towards the end of the season there, and he plays against lefties pretty well. Andy Abanez here, 278 average, six home runs, was a really good bench bat for us. Christian Bethencourt, solid backup catcher, and then Sean Skinner doing his thing there. Who led us in RBIs? Well, Mike Trout, that's an easy one. Alec Bohm with 88, and Patrick Wisdom with 80. Stolen bases with Sean Skinner. We didn't steal a whole lot of bases. Skinner had our worst average. Our best on base guy was Mike Trout, though, 383, Shanuel, 365. 602 slugging for Mike Trout is just ridiculous. And I'm looking at OPS. These four guys, I talked about it. This might be the best one through four in baseball. JD, Dev JD Davis struck out a lot. Patrick Wisdom did as well. Mike Trout, 134 strikeouts. Sean Skinner only struck out 33 times in 193 at-bats. Luis Renjifo, though, with 20 errors is ridiculous. Looking at war. Mike Trout with a 7.7 war. J.D. Davis, 4.7. Alec Bohm, 3.6. Ohapi, 3.5. Nolan Shanuel, 2.2. Renjifo, 1.9. Only guy that had a negative war, Austin Hayes. Negative 0.8 war. But I'm going to tell you something right now. He will play in the playoffs against left-handed pitching because he's pretty solid against them. Sean Skinner had a positive war. Alec Bohm with the lowest strikeout rate. Andy Abanez and Zach Neto. So Neto did a really good job not striking out. He just didn't walk that much. So that's just something to think about. And looking at isolated power. Some of these guys are not good power hitters. And I'm pretty sure it's like if you're above 200, you're a really good power hitter. And Mickey Moniak at 201 is kind of interesting. Looking at pitchers here, Chase Silseth with 20 wins. Had one save on a season. He almost pitched the most amount of innings for us. He's probably going to start game one of the World Series. Holy crap, I'm talking to the future now. He's probably going to start game one of the wild card. And he'll probably pitch three innings. That's probably what the plan is for him. Um, and let him be an opener and see if that experiment works. 82 overall now. Pretty solid year for him. 
He walked the most amount of batters, though, but he was second in strikeouts just behind Michael King. Jose Soriano, 4.33 ERA. Montgomery, 4.11 means, 4.19. Griffin Canning, 4.11. Andrew Wance, 4.09. I think it's fair to say our team ERA is probably around four. Michael King with a 4.04 ERA. Fernando Guillen, 3.72. He's up to a 76 overall. So I think what the plan is, is Chase Silseth will face the Astros lineup. Once he comes around to the second time, I think we're going to bring in Michael King to face them the rest of the way. Looking at whip here, Ben Joyce, high whip. Tanner Scott with a really low whip. Eric Mott only played nine innings, but he's going to get some chances here in the playoffs. Jimmy Herget, really solid. John Means, pretty solid as well. 20 quality starts for John Means, so that's a really good average, you know. In 32 starts, 20 of them were quality starts. Same with Montgomery. Michael King, not so much, but our highest war player was Chase Silseth, followed by Jordan Montgomery. I think we'll get Montgomery game two of the playoffs. Michael King will get game one alongside Chase Silseth. I think that gives us the best chance to win the game. And then, do we have any negative war guys? No, we didn't. So that's good to see. Our pitching was solid. Eric Mott, high strikeout guy, but Caleb Ferguson will be a shutdown lefty um, come to playoff times. Jose Soriano as well could be a shutdown guy. Yeah, I think you need a strikeout. Jose Soriano might be the guy. Ben Joyce, Michael King, Andrew Wayans, Tanner Scott, not much of a strikeout guy. But he didn't walk anybody, which is crazy to see because I feel like when we got him in free agency, he was known to be a guy who walks people. But looking at his walks per nine, yeah, this was an exceptional season. Didn't give up home runs. Wasn't striking guys out, but you didn't need him to. John Means not walking a whole lot. Fernando Guillen. And then home runs. Griffin Canyon gave up a high home run per nine alongside Fernando Guillen. So if Guillen can get that home run per nine up, I think he'll be a much better player. Tanner Scott, though, not giving up home runs. Yeah, liking the way the team's looking heading into the playoffs. Guillen, the FIP is extremely high for him. Montgomery, 3.97. King, 4.03. So trying to differentiate the two just to see who I want to start game two versus game three. Or game one, I mean. But that is a look at the statistics here. One last thing I wanted to take a look at is I wanted to take a look at the Phillies and Patrick Sandoval. What kind of year did he have? Yep, I think we made the right call to trade him away. He started 21 games and he had a 4.37 ERA, 1.4 whip. 1.2 war player. I think it was the right move. And then what we got in return with Alec Bohm, yeah, we won that trade by a mile. And then the Guardians with Reed Detmers. Yeah, I think we won this trade as well. You know, I get it. He's an A potential guy, 85 overall, but a 4.76 whip. I mean, ERA, 1.5 whip. The war, he's a 1.9 war player, but yeah, I just, he wasn't in my future. You know, he wasn't in my future plans on this team. So I think that was the right call for sure. The awards. Corey Seager wins the MVP with 45 home runs. Mike Trout finishes in third. We got to prove him wrong now. Chase Silseth finished second in Cy Young. I'm pretty sure he probably still did lead the league in wins though. Luis Arise wins the batting title. Mike Trout third place in the Hank Aaron Award. So it looks like we won no awards here. J.D. Davis third in gold glove for third baseman. Luis Renifo, third for Silver Slugger, second baseman. Alec Bohm, second for third base Silver Slugger. Okay, Mike Trout did win a Silver Slugger award, so that is one award, he, award he's going to win. 2022 was the last time he won that award. And did we have any... No, we already went through Gold Glovers. We're going to win the postseason MVP and the World Series MVP. Just you wait. Looking at the league leaders here, Chase Silseth won in winning percentage, and he won in wins as a pitcher so that's pretty cool to see right there home runs it was 45 for Seager 45 for Alvarez 53 home runs for Shohei Otani yeah I'm gonna guess he probably won MVP over there I, let's look at that yeah he wins the MVP he wins the Cy Young as well he wins the batting title holy crap this guy's not even fair looking at reliever of the year rookie of the year was Blaine Krim 28 years old winning the rookie of the year is ridiculous well you know what that means we're gonna have to give him a potential now because at 28 years old you know we got to give him a chance to reach that potential james wood 
second in rookie of the year. He plays for the Marlins now, so that's something to think about. And it was Jackson Holiday winning it in the American League. So I'm going to set our pitching rotation here. It will be Michael King who I give the ball after Chase Silseth. So it's Michael King, Montgomery. And then I want to go John Means, I do believe, in this situation. I want to go John Means as our number three, then Griffin Canning. And then if we need to, we'll allow Fernando Guillen to pitch here. I might go through, you know, later on tonight off camera and see who performed better against the Astros, if it was Michael King or Jordan Montgomery. And then I'll give one of them the ball in game one following Chase Silseth. But Chase Silseth will for sure probably start game one. Jimmy Hergett is our number two. Eric Mott, Ben Joyce, Jose Soriano, and Caleb Ferguson are your two middle, four middle relief guys. Andrew Wance, should I give him closing duties again? I think I will. So Andrew Wance back to the bullpen as a closer. Tanner Scott will be the setup guy. One thing I am curious about, I'll do it here in a second, and then I'll set our lineup here. So I have our lineup set. The one big one is Sean Skinner will start at shortstop against righties. I don't think Zach Neto is going to give us the greatest chance against righties. Um, Sean Skinner with that speed and his defense, I think he'll be pretty solid. If it comes back to bite us in game one, then he'll be out of that situation. But I am going to give him the opportunity to start at shortstop in the playoffs here. Not to mention, looking at his attributes here, 82 contact versus lefties. That's gone up, which is good to see. And the power has seen an increase as well. I'm definitely excited about this as we do have some days off before we face the Astros. So everybody should be 100% as far as stamina goes. Looking at the playoff bracket. You have the Dodgers and the Braves as the one and two seeds in the NL. You have the Rays and Twins as the one and two seeds in the American League. Looking at the matchups in the NL, you got the Phillies versus the Reds, and you have the Cubs versus the Diamondbacks. So the Diamondbacks still have a chance to go back to back to back to back World Series appearances. The Orioles will not have that chance to go three straight as they did not make the playoffs because you have the Rangers versus the Guardians in the first wild card matchup, and you have the Astros versus us in the next one. I think I, I think I said the Rangers, not the Angels in the Cleveland game. But anyway, we will be on the road for the entire series. So we need to win, or we're not going to have a chance to play at home in the playoffs. Mike Trout has never won a playoff game, so that's also something to think about. As we advance one more day, here we are. Hunter Brown will get the ball in game one. Michael King will come in after Chase Silseth comes in. I don't know why it says Houston leads the series 2-1. to one. That doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense. Hunter Brown, 27 years old. He's an 88 overall. Christian Javier and Luis Garcia. The starters are pretty good. They got Brian Abreu out of the bullpen. And other than that, you know, I think we could take advantage of this pen. And then looking at their next guy is Josh Hader. Obviously really good. You got Yiner Diaz and Jose Trevino. Andrew Vaughn, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Jeremy Pena, Jordan and Teoscar, Chaz McCormick, and then you have Jordan Luplo, who also made the roster here. So that's just something to think about as far as the Astros go. The Guardians won the first game against the Rangers, and the Reds won the first game against the Phillies. But I'm excited about this here. It'll be game one upcoming in the next episode. Not game one. It'll be the entire wild card series in the next episode. We're going to look to upset our division rivals in the Houston Astros. It's going to be Chase Silseth on the mound to start the game against Hunter Brown and the Astros. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please leave a like. And I hope to see you guys at the wild card game in Houston. See ya.